What's up, guys? Welcome to the Line Check Podcast. It's me, Brennan, your host. Today, I'm in the studio with Waldo Stout, also known as Waldo's Pizza. Uh, it's good to have you in the studio. How's it going? Good, man. Just chilling. Uh, Just making pizza all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, no, nah, thanks for inviting me. Mm-hmm. Or I know I kind of twisted your arm on this one no, that's all when good. I was having a, 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 a few too many drinks, I guess you can say. <laughs> Pivy on not, the goddamn not, there's no, podcast. There's no such thing as too many drinks, but no. I would say I was feeling good, so I appreciate you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's always good to have friends back on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, you're on Battle of the Houses with JoJo. What a yeah. great episode. If no one's seen it, they should <laughs> definitely watch it. It's yeah. really funny. Um, yeah, but if no one knows who Waldo actually is, he's a... Uh, a pizza guy. He calls us the pe- you're the pizza guy. You I'm know? the pizza guy. Of, a pizza guy. Of Long Beach, of LA. Uh, opened a lot of great restaurants here in Long Beach uh, and all the LA. Yeah. Um, yeah. And his pizza is really, really good. So I want to get into it real quick. Okay. How'd you start off as a cook? Like, uh, what inspired you to start cooking? Um. So when I first started off as a cook, I was. I actually was front of the house first. Mm -hmm. So um, I've been working in hospitality uh, since I was maybe 16, 17. I was working for a Marriott. I'm originally from Tucson, Arizona. So I was working at JW Marriott Mm -hmm. out there. And then uh, I got a transfer out here to California. And then my first restaurant job ended up being at uh, Kianina. Um, cool. Yeah. So R. Old steak, <laughs> yeah, old steakhouse on uh, Belmont Shores. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I actually opened the place. I was start off as a food runner there, and I actually moved up as a server. And for whatever reason, I decided to, I decided to drop down and be a cook. I don't know. I was just so stoked on cooking. I was like food running, watching all the food happen. It was just like badass seeing them in the you know kitchen cooking over fire. Yeah, honestly, it was. There was one particular moment. I remember the chef. His name was Brian Taylor. Uh, he was running the place at the time when he opened it. Um, I was asking him. He was making yoki, and I was like. But what are you doing? It's like potatoes and flour. And I'm just like, I've never seen this in my life. Right. Like I was pretty, pretty like I didn't know anything about food up until I started cooking, mm-hmm. really like well done steaks, blah, yeah, blah, yeah. blah. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like pretty rough. But um, he was making gnocchi one day and it kind of blew my mind. And that's kind of where it started. So I was watching the food to like help running the line as a as a food runner, not as a mm-hmm. cook or anything like that. But then. I got so excited about it that I just I decided to drop the the serving position and be a full time cook at eleven dollars an hour. So, Hell so yeah, yeah, that's how I got into it. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> it's funny because I remember when I got my first kitchen job and I was making eight dollars an hour as a dishwasher, <laughs> and then I like had a weird transition where I was a prep cook in the morning mm-hmm. at, at the restaurant I worked at, and then I'd go home, come back, and then come back as a busser. (laughs) And then I was just so happy working front of house because I was getting so much tips being a busser. Yeah. And I was like, wait, I don't want to go back into the kitchen. Yeah, exactly. But when they add the overtime, I was like, dang, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's Back in the day. (laughs) Dude, it's tough. When I was younger, you could do that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I was really stoked on cooking because at the time too, when I was at Kianina, I was at, you know, they, I moved my way up to a server. Yeah. And Kianina back then, that was like, I would say like our heritage to Long Beach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we didn't really, you know, (laughs) there's no other place in Long Beach where you're like, I want to go cook somewhere sick. And like that was kind of Michael's and Kianina. Yeah. Yeah. They were, they were big time. They, uh, they made a bunch of lists and they were, you know, they're really good restaurants, especially at that time. But um, yeah, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't searching for anything. Mm-hmm. I just, just kind of stumbled learn, yeah. upon it. And it's funny too because when I first got a job there, I was like, it was a Craigslist ad, and I was like, what's this weird place in Long Beach? Ah, I don't know. I just I'll go check it out. It had no name on it, mm-hmm. no nothing. The cra- and I showed up, and I asked to be a busser so that I knew I was going to get a job because I needed a job. I was like, I was 
I was uh, unemployed for sure I'll at do the whatever. time. And then, yeah, they just turned me into a busser and then eventually a server. But it was kind of crazy because I was like, I was making, you know, especially this was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, or like nine or whatever, when they first, first opened and you're sitting there as a server and I was 23 and making like 350 bucks a night <laughs> and like for whatever stupid reason, I yeah. decided to be like, you know what I want? I want to be a cook now, do making you, 11 you, bucks an hour. Do you regret dude. that decision? <laughs> dude, I mean, 350 I mean, now you, sounds good. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? For, You're just like, a night? I'm like, yeah. fuck, no. Uh, no, I don't regret it. <laughs> you made me question myself right now, but uh, I don't regret it. Yeah. I mean, I love what I do, but I think it's... Um, it was good experience to see both sides, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So that's when, that's when, uh, you know, when we had the battles mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, what's the easiest job in the restaurant? And that's when I said server because you know. I got a lot of heat for First it, but hand, I have been yeah. that too. You know what I mean? So I still stand behind that, oh, by yeah. the way. <laughs> so if, I know. I, yeah. If so, if you want to, if, if anybody wants to argue with me about it, then I'm, I'm here. I'm open. You can, uh, you can comment it in the sections <laughs> when we release this. Yeah, uh, ser being a server is still the easiest job in the restroom. <laughs> Um, how did you start cooking pizza? How did you end up doing that? What made you fall in love with it? Um, so after Kianina, um, I kind of made a couple rounds at a couple restaurants in LA. Um, after leaving Kianina, I basically Googled best restaurants in LA mm -hmm. and I ended up at Bestia, just walked through the doors, asked for a job and got one still making n not much money too. Um, and uh <clears throat> so i you know i stayed there for a couple years i kind of bounced around at a couple other restaurants i worked at you know, some places that are not worth mm, mentioning yeah, you yeah. know <laughs> like they're, it's whatever um and so prior also prior, we have a special guest here uh yeah, all those dog porsches on here Come here. just hanging out hey. eating kong with peanut butter <laughs> <laughs> um so uh actually it it kind of got inspired through a place you worked there too right uh, i Bavel. worked at bavel yeah. yeah yeah so um when i was at bestia as bavel was opening chef ori there decided to take me and one other cook over to bavel to open it mm -hmm. uh open the place up so i was on the hearth because i was working the wood fire grill at the time and um basically what happened was is that i I was I was working at Bavel and I was you know working the heart station and I was right next to the PETA station. Mm -hmm. And so the PETA station, you know, they're making bread and it just looks so sick to me. Mm -hmm. And it was it was kind of like another thing too, is that I grew up with my mom making flour tortillas. Mm -hmm. So I'm from my family's from Sonora. I'm from Tucson. Like the best I, tortillas. <laughs> yeah. yeah, seriously. Yeah, for real. I mean like you know, it's a bold statement, but I don't really like corn tortillas. I'd rather have flour tortillas. So. I, like, I like flour too. Yeah. yeah. And so that kind of just, you know, being a cook there, I was, I just got inspired by looking over at the dough balls because it just reminded me of watching my mom as I grew mm -hmm. up. And it was just some like internal voice there that was like, you, I want to learn this. So I basically did the same thing again. I Googled the best bakeries in LA and Lodge popped up and I went and asked for a job at Lodge Bread mm -hmm. Company in, in Culver City. So that's kind of, I became a baker first before I became a pizza guy. So I worked at Lodge, I worked at Justa, and then um, still being an underpaid cook <laughs> or baker, not, yeah, not just yeah, trying yeah, to make yeah. ends meet. Um, Roberta's at the time in Culver City just about opened. And so I just kind of went and knocked on the door again and asked for a job there. So I was working at Justa in the morning and working at Lodge at night. Damn. Yeah, for, for a minute, for like maybe like a little over a year. Wow. Yeah. So it was crazy because I was I would I would sleep four hour increments. <laughs> so I would I'd wait I would go I'd get home at midnight from Roberta's, sleep until four AM, wake yeah, wake up at four be at Justa by five. And then when I would get off from Justa, I had this Mazda. It was Mazda hatchback. Mm. It had no back seats. Oh, shit. And I would sleep in my car in between my job. And I did that for like a good a good year, dude. It crazy. was it was crazy. I didn't I didn't think it was that crazy because it's, I was just so stoked. You know, it's weird. I fucking did that shit, too. <laughs> <laughs> I say crazy. I say crazy. 
looking back at it because like now I I can't see myself doing that yeah. right now. I'm like, for what? You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah, I already yeah, put yeah. in, I, I think it's because we already put in the work, you know? Yeah, for and sure. And so we paid our dues. So I'm not going to go do that again. No, like, no, no. No like, more doubles. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I mean, I was also like learning at the time. Yeah. I, basically, it's my, very fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. my my thought process was, OK, I need more money. Mm-hmm. I want to learn how to make pizza. So it just kind of made it just kind of made sense to me to be like, all right. So I got this job in the morning, which is sick, which I love doing. Mm-hmm. And then I can go find another job that's sick that I want to do and get paid and like make ends meet. You know, I think I went there was one. It was pretty rough. There was one point and I was like 25 or 26. I think I went like a good set. Of, no, I went four months without a day off. Yeah. like yeah me too like i would have like the morning would be off at the the bakery yeah, yeah, yeah and then yeah. but i would work at roberta's at night or yeah. like i would work at you know just in the morning and i had the evening off yeah. and i would sit in the 405 traffic all the way home like falling asleep i also had that same <laughs> life too i'm like sick i got i got like a half day off mm-hmm. that's a day mm-hmm. off <laughs> yeah yeah that was i think i did that for like four months as well yeah i did uh Prep in the morning Porsche, and then go to L.A., work at night. Mm-hmm. And then on my weekends, I would have a pop-up. So there's like no day off. Saturday, Sunday pop-ups. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah I mean, dude, especially how old are you? Uh, I'm at the same age, 33, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 When, you're, when you're younger, I mean, that's the time to do it, really, yeah, exactly. I think. you know. And also, you're not like you're almost too young to like not even think about it, mm-hmm. too. Um, yeah back then you just wake up and you're just like all right let's fucking go pound of whatever (laughs) bang energy drink i'm ready yeah i mean yeah and you would still go out and party and like dude i I was i was like i was you know it was funny because i was i was still getting four hours of sleep in between right in in between jobs and i would still i'd get home from roberta's knowing i had to be up at four Mm. and I would get home like let's say 20 minutes early like you know and i was like yeah i got 20 minutes i'm gonna go to the stash you know or like the beaver the exact you same know? thing <laughs> we, we would take the the blue line sometimes after we get off work mm-hmm. from downtown la and if mm-hmm. we got on the, the the blue line before the last one which because the last one's like at 1 a.m oh yeah I used so to if take we were the able too. to make it back to long beach mm-hmm before last call yeah we're like we can make it before last call i know i'm getting two pbrs two shots yep so like i can catch up to everybody yeah 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 and it was when it was when two shots and two beers was still 20 bucks yeah like now exactly yeah i remember i remember so i used to take the blue line for a minute too and i remember one of the nights just a little insert is uh I was working at Bestie at the time, and I missed because I, w- I was at where oh, everybody was drinking at Tony's, yeah. and they're like, "Come on, come!" I was like, "Yeah, yeah, I'll make it." Yeah. And then, sure enough, I missed the last train, and I just went to like a twenty-four hour like farmer's boy like <laughs> spot and like ordered fries and like slept in the booth wow. and, and caught the first train that left. So I know the dude. The Blue Line struggle. The I mean, Blue Line is dangerous <laughs> <laughs> and sketchy. Yeah. Yeah, I dude, hope I hope I never take the blue line again. No, no. You think the blue line's bad? The red line is bad. Okay, dude. yeah, that's worse. Okay. But anyways, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> blue line's bad. But anyways, yeah. Uh, uh, that's that's how I got into cooking, uh, or I mean, pizza. Uh, making pizza. Is I was a baker first, and then it was kind of just like if it it was baking was sick because I, I I learned a lot of foundation of like percentages mm-hmm. uh, working at lodge a lot of whole wheat justa was like a machine yeah they was it Juice was high so production good. busy all the time dude nuts prime and then time location the chef the chef owner at the time um travis let he was you know he was still a part of the mm-hmm. juice Justa at the time he was the one that created it and he was there all the time every single day too so um it was just like a fun time to be a cook you know like i was at bestia Ori was my station partner for like six, seven months. I like that made me, I was scared and got good real quick. <laughs> yeah, you know what you, I mean? He made you get good real quick. Dude, yeah. I remember being at Bestia and like I burnt a steak and they put me on salad station for like a month, dude. And I was like, man, they want me to quit. And then like after that month, they they actually bumped me back to the, I, I think it was because they needed somebody. It wasn't because they were like, oh, this guy's great. But yeah. <laughs> they I was, put uh, me back on the grill. They, well, they put me on the brick oven station with no brick oven experience oh, or man. dough experience. That's rough. 
with 400 covers. Yeah. And I got my <laughs> shit rocked. I only lasted three months until I hurt myself. Oh, but, shit. But yeah, shit's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Those, Ruthless. Those, yeah, those uh, restaurants are hardcore. For yeah. Sure. I felt like I was, if I was 21 and I worked there, yeah. it would have been like f- more for me. You yeah. Know, yeah. Hungry. Yeah. Better body, yeah. Better body, <laughs> better back, better legs. <laughs> I know uh, all about that. Yeah, I can't, I can't hang. My body can't hang like that no more. Dude, honestly, I was literally running, really? running. I'm 30 years old. I'm running in the kitchen. <laughs> I shouldn't be running in the kitchen anymore. I miss it sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, do. I grew up in it, man. Yeah. So like, I like, I totally miss it sometimes because. But, anyways, yeah, that was that was that's how I got into pizza. Roberta's is a. Uh, is definitely the foundation of uh, of me. Your origin story. Yeah, starting. Pizza so, origins. Yeah, a New Yorker taught me. A New Yorker taught me how to make pizza. The guy, they sent a guy from um, the Robertas in New York mm-hmm. to open up the location in here in Culver City, and uh, his name is Chris Acona. He's actually, I think he's the he runs like all like of the operations. Yeah, the yeah. Op- yeah. Operations. Yeah. He runs all of it now. So everywhere from the New York and every location across the United States now. Mm-hmm. And so, um, yeah, he taught me how to make pizza. So yeah. So that's Roberta's is a big part of my, my pizza career. So when did you start coming into your own, like having an identity for your like pizza? Um, I mean, you know, I, my own personal identity. I mean, I've, you know, I've worked at a lot of pizza places that kind of wanted specific things. Mm -hmm. Right. So I I used to work at Graw. They were like really sourdough, whole wheat uh, pushing. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean the little coyote thing, that's like a whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um, that was, you know, that was, they wanted something specific you know, I did what I could, um, but I didn't get into having my own identity. And I mean, I felt like I had my own personal identities mm-hmm. along the along the way. Yeah, like you kind of picked at certain like spots. Maybe you worked at or you cooked that before, and you're like, "This is starting to create my own identity." Yeah, you know, like when you have like favorite chefs or chefs you didn't like working with, and you're like, "I don't want to be like that chef, but I want to <laughs> be more like that chef." Kind of yeah. like that, yeah. I think uh, I think at every place that I worked along the way was it gave me I had like a small identity along the way right just mm-hmm. like any chef or any cook right yeah. that has some influence in their menu but um, I think uh, you know I opened up Beachwood Pizza and Beer in Huntington and I felt like that was essentially like where I really kind of opened up because. I did a lot of whole wheat, sourdough. I was making my own, um, I was making my own flour. Mm -hmm. I was milling my own grains. I was using all these different crazy, like, um, flowers from different places that I wanted to use. And it was literally a reflection of like all my experience leading, leading up to that point. You know what I mean? So I used Sonoran wheat because I was like, all right, I want to use flour from where, you know, by, you know, where I'm from or whatever. I just thought that was kind of cool. Um, I used hard white wheat because I liked the flavor. Then I just like mixed in all this other stuff that I was like, it was like a baker's pizza, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of whole wheat, sourdough. And yeah, that was kind of it. And then I led it into, you know, having Waldo's pizza becoming becoming a thing. So yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. What makes your pizza unique from like other pizzerias? I mean <laughs> I not, make it. Yeah. <laughs> <There's>, <laughs> I mean I touch oh, every there's, single there's, dough ball. There's there's differences in like obviously different pies. Mm-hmm. Um but like if you're to explain to someone like the audience on the podcast listening, you yeah. know, how how would you you know, describe your pizza that, you know, that stands out compared to other pizzerias? Well, first and foremost, I think it's, uh, all my experience goes into it. Right. So like working at a bakery and working all Mm -hmm. these different pizzerias. So that comes into play. Um, me personally, I decided that the best pizza that I think is out there is made out of a wood fire oven. So that's the personal part. Right. Um, and then for me, I feel like sourdough is the best flavor. And on top of that, too, it's just kind of finding a middle, like a middle ground for what you like and what 
people are going to like as well because dude if it was up to me and i could make like any pizza that i wanted to do it'd be it would be ridiculous mm -hmm. like i would have like way too much whole wheat but then it would burn in the wood fire yeah. oven and then i wouldn't be making milling my own grains but then my pizza would have to be like 35 dollars for a 12 inch yeah. pizza it's yeah. like it doesn't make any sense right yes so as a business owner yeah yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> So um, I make a pizza that I am 100% content with serving, that I love myself. Without sacrificing yourself. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, you know, when I get, hopefully, you know, in the near future, I get a, a brick and mortar or something and I have a little more resources and like, you know, then the pizza dough is going to change. And I feel like any good pizza dough does change yeah. any when it comes to bread or anything mm -hmm. like that but um yeah so mine is a sourdough i have a little bit of whole wheat in it i ferment everything for um 48 hours for two days i don't think you have to go any further than that there's a lot of people that do less or do more mm -hmm. but the two-day ferment is like the sweet spot okay for me for me so you know um yeah i do i mean it's uh, the other thing too is that the percentage of water that I put in my in my pizza is that I like, you know, there's like Neapolitan style pizza where it's like floppy. Yeah, and that, that's I want like a in the middle. Like I want still a little. I definitely get that structure. Yeah, but it has still the the bend a little bit yes. without falling over though. It it at least my pizza is at least what I aim for is a pizza that it's not going to be a New York style pizza where it's not going to flop, mm -hmm. but it, it is going to have enough structure where that you can like hold it and eat it without it. Like all the toppings falling off, yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? So I like crunchy. I like soft. It's like the crust like, is amazing. <laughs> Thanks. It's I appreciate like chewy, that. Yeah. Um, soft has structure, has a cr crunch on the, on the outer. And that's what I'm aiming yeah. for. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? Like that's a, yeah. I like that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would like, hopefully everybody feels the same yeah. way. They, get <laughs> <laughs> they don't let it sit in a box for yeah, too long. Exactly. Yeah. Um, what have been some of the struggles of being a, a cook growing, like growing, you know, being working at different places that, you know, you probably had a rough time at. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Um, the rough, damn, where do we start, dude? Oh, you can... Yeah. It's, um, the str struggles of being a young cook and growing is, uh, you know, kind of being ambitious. You kind of don't. You kind of don't know, at least for me, I never knew when to shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? So my mouth used to get me in trouble a lot. <laughs> and it still does. You know what I mean? Um, but I, the big struggles was, is, uh, you know, kind of kind of trusting the process. Mm -hmm. Because I know I've been cooking now for about 10 years. And there's still stuff that I'm learning. You oh, know yeah, what I mean? Me and you will yeah. continue to learn. And I think it's, um, you know, you build confidence in like yourself, but it doesn't mean that you know everything, mm -hmm. you know? So the biggest struggles was, is, uh, especially at a place like Bestia, it's like just saying, like, listen, yes, yes chef, chef, and like doing your job and like just hustling. Because one thing that got instilled into me when I was there for a couple of years was that like, you move, you make it right. And if it's not perfect, throw it you away. throw it away. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if thank god that was instilled into me because i like i live on the edge of where like if if it's if it's not good or if it's slightly too dark mm. or any food like if a salad is salted too much or a pizza has too much color or burnt on one side and it's okay on the other um that it's like yeah, getting comfortable with refiring was probably like a huge struggle. Pay, of course, is a mm -hmm. struggle too. You know what I mean? But yeah. when it comes to like cooking, cooking, yeah, it was, it was finding finding the balance of like knowing what you're going to serve and what and feeling comfortable, getting comfortable with being okay with not serving something that's not mm -hmm. perfect. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it's definitely it's, it's it's just like your ego up. You know? Yeah. Um. I think when you're on the line too, especially like such a massive operation like Bestia, mm -hmm. yeah, and with that many covers, you're you're usually like have a rail of tickets as soon as service starts. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? So just throwing something away puts you behind, and no one wants to throw anything away in that moment. Mm -hmm. But being able to just be like, "Yeah, I fucked up. All right, throw it. Do it again." So you don't even have like time to like 
think you just like already know that you have to refire it yeah so then you're like less thinking more doing yeah equals it's coming out faster exactly and it it, it was i mean even at best when i was at best we didn't have tickets it was like everything was verbal oh right? yeah verbal yeah. So, yeah, yeah yeah and i mean bavel too yeah, right yeah, so verbal um it was uh that place is a machine, you know, like I remember one time it was like me and Ori were on the grill and I was cooking. Dude, we had like 17 fish fired. We had like 12 ribeyes. It was just wild. You yeah. know, it was it's a, crazy. Bro. Yeah. And it it's was crazy. like, I was, I loved it, dude. Yeah. I would show up deathly hungover. It's literally war. It's <laughs> war. It was great. I, th- I loved it. I thrived in it. I like at first I almost... I almost broke for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but after I got the hang of it and I, I kind of figured out the culture, uh, it was it was fun. And uh, but yeah, like that was the big thing, too. It's like if it wasn't perfect, throw it out. And, you know, the f- maybe the first couple months of like learning that mm-hmm. it was it was it was hard because you're just like you're wasting something. Yeah. You're throwing it away. You're like. You know, like, oh, why don't you just add a little more lead? And like, no, no, no. Nah, like, that's not you know, how no, works. no, you can't. Like, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was cooking like yeah. $150 ribeyes and I would overcook one. And it was just like, all right, throw it out. Or like, <laughs> or like, <laughs> or like, the oh. back. <laughs> in the back, I'll take it. No, it was crazy. Yeah, it was, I mean, it would be later. like that. And be like, or like, or like, yeah. they would put it up on the line. And There's be like, definitely get a lot it out of here. Flat, put it to the back. Flat yeah, yeah. And burn and be like, all right. Yeah, let's well, go. You did. Send it to the office. I don't know, that was a big thing. But it was also the other th- good thing about that place is that the volume was so high that, like, if you did mess up a fish, you know, you had like five other fish yeah. like lined up behind yeah, exactly. it or ribeyes or whatever. But that doesn't mean that, mm-hmm. like, it it's still uncomfortable. You know what I mean? So, so yeah. So I don't know. That's one part. So yeah. What about like? Any sh- problems with business owners in Long Beach? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I want to hear so, T. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Which one? Which whatever, one? I got, whatever I got, one, I got, whatever I got, one I that you'd like you like to tell. You no wanna, pressure. You want to talk about the more recent one? Yeah, let's talk about recents. Okay. Um, yeah, the uh, big struggles in uh, once you kind of graduate to running a location or um being part of a establishment and you're mm-hmm. like the creative or you're the chef or whatever you have like a bigger yeah, influence. ownership yeah 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 so like um it's tough because you know when <laughs> all right we'll get into it so <laughs> when you're just the guy that's the chef running or the show the, or ru- yeah, yeah running yeah. the ship and you're just making a paycheck like it It sucks because you end up, you know, as fun as it is, you still and always will be at the mercy of the person that's paying you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So these people, owners, whatever, uh, partners, all these people, they're the ones that own the business. Right. So they are going to be the ones that are going to be like, "Mm, here's the direction of the restaurant. This is where I wanted to go. And it just it almost never lines up with the person that actually like running the ship. And they're just like, well, Somebody like me, or maybe like you, hopefully it would be like, I want quality over quantity. Yeah. And then you run across people that are like, nah, I want numbers Yeah. versus what you want. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then you start bumping heads with people and stuff like that. So I had that issue with, you know, Little Coyote. That was, and that was one of many issues there. Um, Honestly, the pizza is not as, it's not, that's okay. It's just not good anymore. It's from when you were there. I just have to be honest with the people it was funny it was funny because actually i was it it just sounds so funny but uh just a little side note is that you know i was like doing i I do pop-ups at the grasshopper and i'm like sitting there with like two little like pizza ovens or whatever and these guys come up and they're like oh yeah they're like had the pizza like dude this is amazing blah 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 and we start talking and he's like yeah you know little coyote used to be good like the first year i was like yeah because i was there the first year <laughs> and like and like, That's what like every, no dude, shame it was no like, everybody every i've heard that comment more like, than at least 20 times yeah <laughs> it's like oh it used to be good i'm like yeah that guy over there he's mm-hmm. the guy that used to cook it dude i just i mean little coyote man that was a that was such an amazing it was it was it started just like every relationship mm-hmm. right yeah it started off great you know we blew up we had like 
man, I remember sitting in front of that pizza oven for like eight hours straight, just cranking out pizzas. We'd sell out. You guys were busy. It was during COVID mm-hmm. too. So it almost felt like I skipped COVID because we were so busy that like I was busy. Like yeah. I was doing things. Yeah. I, was, I remember you know, I came in a couple times, ate mm-hmm. on the patio, Yeah, fed us some food. It was great. Yeah. But then you know, the owners... They sucked. <laughs> I'm sorry. This was prior. These are prior owners. Yeah, I think yeah, there's yeah. new owners now. There's new owners whatever. right now. So yeah, 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 yeah. Don't go into the shop no, now. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't, don't do, do that. Don't do that. <laughs> no, this is from back in the yeah. day. This is 2020. Yeah. Um, way, way back. Yeah, four yeah, years yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so, I don't know what's going on now. I don't know. It's, I don't think anybody I used to work with or or yell at yeah. works there anymore. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have tea on the new on the new owner's spot. But yeah. Um. So that's yeah. yeah I think. If anyone becomes a chef in a business where they're still, you know, just an employee yeah. to make sure you just like protect yourself and also know what you're getting yourself into yeah. with a contract. Yes. You know, yes. before you decide to jump on the ship. Yeah. 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 So, I so mean, then you don't jump off the ship. <laughs> just, I mean, like go, you know, my, you know, I was new, right? Like I was new to like leadership yeah. and I, I was just excited to like jump on board and like be a part of something that was growing and stuff yeah, like I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, you wouldn't want to open a pizzeria on 4th Street. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I mean like, dude, I, at the time during COVID, I was like I was I was working I was managing like a ghost kitchen in like Hollywood oh, and I was yeah. like take and I no. my car broke yeah. broke down and I was taking the blue line and it was wild and then like I was like, you know what? I stumbled upon the little coyote situation. That was like, oh man, this is great. Mm-hmm. You know, and then, uh, yeah, it just went sour. But I mean, my suggestion to the new guys, the new chefs or even the young guys or even the older dudes, um, when you get into a situation, either like kind of assess everything for sure, you know, whether it's a contract or um, there's a timeline or do you want to be there forever or you want to be there not forever, Mm -hmm. just so that like everything is like laid out so that the owners know what you're, what, how you feel. You have and expectations. How, yeah. Everyone has expectations yeah. on both sides. Of because the- for the most part, you know, best case scenario for these owners that what they want you to do is they want you to, they want to lock you in, especially if you're good, like lock you in and have you stay because then they know that their business is going to like be fine. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? So so yeah, just just watch your ass. Yeah, dude. <laughs> speak, speak careful. Don't be taking advantage. Yeah, of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I mean, and, just, and don't cook a cuisine that you don't like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It I sounds would, exciting and fun to be at the helm of something, but at the end of the day, after like probably six months, you're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is not what I want to be cooking. Yeah, and then you're not gonna be creative either exactly. if you're not like if it's not yeah. your thing. So, so yeah. Um, so yeah, so that that was a big blowout thing. Um, well, yeah, I enjoyed that story. That was nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, it got real yeah, political yeah, at, the end, you know, at the end. We gotta get some. You're Waldo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you want to yeah. talk about how I yelled at the owner of Beachwood or something? Oh sure. Can no. we add that into your um, into your in the weeds? Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into. No, oh, yeah, that's fine. Is that it in the weeds? That's more like a. That's a. What's it called? Can't Maybe you can edit this part. Blow up, mo- blow up moment. Yeah, there you go. Anyways, uh, sorry. Go for it. Oh, yeah. So tell me your uh, favorite in the weed story before we wrap up here. Oh, shit. Um, okay. So my in the weeds moment is actually something that was recent. This was... Uh, so this is the beginning of Waldo's Pizza. So <laughs> Waldo's Pizza... Waldo's Pizza... You know, when I first started, uh, when I first started doing pop ups and stuff like that, so I was, I got all my equipment, everything's brand new. I was trying to find like cheap or used stuff or whatever, right? So I get this double door fridge, mind you. I had like three pop ups roll, like I had three pop ups planned for a weekend, and Shit. I'm sitting, I'm sitting there rolling dough, and I'm looking at my fridge, and I'm like. Oh, uh, it's not at 36 or 37 degrees. And I'm just like, hmm. Wait, did it read that it was there? But when you went inside, it was not. No, 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 no. Like it was. So it was supposed to be it's set for 37. OK. And it was not at 37. It was okay. at like 42. But I was like opening the door and yeah, like putting yeah, yeah. dough in it. So I'm it's like, like one of those sensitive regions. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, I'm like, ah, it'll go. It'll go up. It'll, it'll be fine. 
I didn't think anything of it. Right. And then, so I finished dough, I finished everything. I put everything in there. And then next thing you know, I'm like, I take off, you know, I go inside and I come back and I see it's at like 50 degrees and I'm like, like, Oh my God, what's going on? I was like, it's not working. So I have all this dough, all this product in my fridge and it's at 50 degrees, you know, uh, when it should be at like 37 yeah. or 30, you know, 36 or whatever. So I'm tripping, you know, I have all, I have probably like 200 dough balls. I have all my cheese. I have nowhere else to put it. Mm-hmm. I start freaking out. So I'm calling, I'm calling my friends. I'm like, Hey, I need a fridge guy. I need this or whatever. And so sure enough, a fridge, I, I don't know how I got it, but a fridge guy, like a, yeah, a fridge guy came to come check it out, and he was like, yeah, it wasn't a condenser, but it was my, what was it? It was, uh, uh, something that's not working, the fan, yeah, no, the what, bell. What, no, it's like on the tip of my tongue. Um, uh, dehumidifier oh, okay, in, the, yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah. The dehumidifier wasn't working, so it wasn't like reading and cooling, mm. but the fans were, where everything else was yeah, working. Yeah, yeah. Mind you, I, like, this is my, a month in and I just spent 2,500 bucks on this like fridge. And I will say too, it's kind of my fault because I bought a fridge. I bought a cheap fridge. Yeah. You know, I was like, I bought this thing like from China or whatever. (laughs) And like, they're all from China, but like I bought the cheapest thing I can find. And you got what you got. (laughs) Yeah, dude, I was so bummed. And so I spent that entire weekend buying dried ice from Long Beach Ice Company. Like mm-hmm. every day I showed up and bought like 40 pounds. Damn. And I spent so much money on ice. Yeah, the ice is expensive. Dude, there. Yeah. yeah. And I'm just like, I have like these, I have these uh these bus tubs. The bus tubs with dry ice next to the fans going, <laughs> right? But then it was like the worst because then all the dry ice in there made it so cold that my dough was starting to freeze. <laughs> and so I'm like doing pop-ups. And I started these pop-ups like like in August. So it was like in the middle of summer. So I'm like pulling the dough out and like, dude, it was it was a mess. So that entire weekend, I was like I was fighting my fridge with dry or fitting or like throwing dry ice in my fridge to get through the weekend stressed out of my mind. And then the fr- like the guy to come fix the, the guy that came to come fix the fr- fridge was like, Oh, this part I can't get because you bought a cheap fridge. But, so I can't like- fix it. Dude. It ended up like that entire weekend out of all like three pop-ups in a mm-hmm. row. I made it work. It happened, but I like was going to sleep stressed out, waking up stressed out, buying oh, ice. What's the dough be and like then, tomorrow? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then uh, on top of that, too, like it still cost me like a thousand bucks to yeah, fix. Fuck. And it took me another two weeks before I yeah. fixed it, you know? So Damn. I was, that was probably the most recent, like the worst. I've never experienced anything yeah. like that. You, because still, you still have this. Walk, this fridge, yeah, yeah. Well, I spent a thousand dollars on it. Like, it better. It was yes, still, it's still working. Some memories. I, I was crossing my fingers during some, like this summer. You know yeah, what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So that was, you know, that was also. I didn't experience that much stress on something because usually when you're like managing a re- or like working at a restaurant, you can kind of just call somebody and mm-hmm. then the restaurant will take care of it. Yeah. But now this, this is, is like on, on my hands. Stuff. Yeah. And I'm like. Dude, I'm like, I didn't have a thousand dollars. Like, exactly. I put on a credit. Yeah. I was like, I asked the guy, I was like, can I, can I, like, can I pay you with a credit card? And the guy, he's like, no, I only take Zelle or cash. And Damn. I'm just like, man, what did I like? Yeah, what because am he was because he was just like somebody's homie that yeah, came yeah, and fixed yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. If I would have got a real company to come fix it, probably would have been, been even yeah, more. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like we do like only restaurants with you know. Yeah, so that was <laughs> rough, dude. That was that was that was a pain because I lost money. I was stressed out. I just spent a ton of money on all this equipment, and then it like a month and a half in, it, my fridge blows out. Damn. So yeah. Whew. Yeah, yeah, that was rough. I yeah, I've had similar stories like that where it's just, it's just you know the odds are against you. <laughs> yeah, but now they those situations like that suck just as bad. But but it's like you you kind of like I wouldn't say expect it, but you're kind of like 
Now oh, here we go. Here we yeah. go again. <laughs> Yo. I put myself in this pop up game. Yeah, yeah exactly. Ex- yeah. No backing. The very yeah, the variables are <laughs> like myself, way crazier. Yeah, you know what I it's mean? It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like doing off site stuff and just having like, oh shit, I forgot blah 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 this thing and <laughs> I gotta go all the way back home and go grab it. Um or yeah, stuff like that. Dude, I've I've it's done- easy fix, but it's like you know, maybe you're doing like a catering for something super important, like oh, start time is like at four. Yeah. And you're in Venice and you live in Long Beach and you forgot salt. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that, that's forgot happened. gloves. I'm, I'm yeah, like, yeah, all right, well, yeah. there's extra parm in this salad to like, you yeah, know. Yeah. Um Dude, I've had that before where like I uh because my you know, I have a wood fire pizza trailer. So I'm like hauling that thing around to mm-hmm. like do like caterings and stuff. And something like you, you, you're always gonna forget something. So you like you try. Even your if best. I have a checklist, I always, I think I almost always forget something, dude. Almost always, for sure. Like whether even if it's something simple, like Napkin. you use tape to like yeah. hang up your lights and you forget your tape. Like some things are bigger or more important than others. But I remember I was on the way to a wedding and I had my my pizza trailer, and I was already halfway there, so I was already like forty minutes away from home. <laughs> And Portia, I realized <laughs> <laughs> you're good. Yeah, I pour. I I realized that I forgot. Uh, what's it called? The pizza stands and utensils. Oh, yeah. so like for the catering, yeah, right? Yeah. So like, you know, to elevate the pizzas and like the tongs to like Crap, grab the salads, it, yeah. and then so I was like, fuck, I'm already happy. Like, so I had to turn around. Mm. I turned around. I came back home. I had them. In my box, dude. I was like, I was like, went into, you know, I, I went in, I started looking through all my equipment. I was like, dude, where is this? Mm. And then I go and I look in the box. Like, it's just like, there's always that like anxiety yeah, of yeah. it. And so that was pretty rough. It ended up being just fine because I always like to do things early, but that could have been yeah ugly showing yeah. up late. You know, yeah, I had people exactly. waiting for me. There I'd already. rather I'd rather be on early than be late mm-hmm. if I'm missing something. Yeah, it's uh, also it's also kind of. You got to play. There's a balance for relax. (laughs) There's a balance there because like with dough, like unless you have like a like a fridge, it's, you know, you're you uh, you're at the mercy of like the weather outside, especially when it comes to like catering and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. Well, it was really good to have you on the podcast. Yeah, it's really fun. Glad you brought your dog Porsche. Come yeah. hang out with us today. <laughs> um, if anyone has not tried Waldo's Pizza, make sure you give him a follow on Instagram. Uh, check out wherever he's gonna be popping up. Usually pops up at local bars here in Long Beach, like Grasshopper and V Room. Um, but yeah, give him a follow and you know see where he's gonna come up next and try his pizza and say what's up. Tell him that line check sent you, Brennan. <laughs> and also, he's got some sick merch. Thank you for the hat, by the way. Yeah, for sure, dude. Yeah, this hat is sick. Yeah, I know. I know yeah. you, it's you like mentioned a it. It's so. like Fireball Mario. <laughs> yeah, I like it. All yeah. right, guys. We'll catch you later. Take it, take it easy. Thanks for having me.